Did you hear Sarah Silverman? So she's like joining forces with Christopher Golden and Richard Cadre. Hope I said that right. But basically to sue Meta and OpenAI, which is of course the maker of ChatGPT. So this is such an insanely hot topic. And I'm so excited to talk about this because the lawsuit essentially deals with this topic we keep discussing. When AI goes in and analyzes all the copyrighted stuff, the books, right? The posts, it looks at artwork, it's doing all of the analysis to then create something new for you when you put in chat GBT, hey, write me a script. Hey, write me a blog post. Mm, mm, mm. So is that a derivative work? Well, Sarah Silverman and her co-plaintiffs, they say absolutely, and they want a decision of this. So they've made this a class action or they're trying to anyway. Let me go through this a little bit. They filed in San Francisco federal court. They're alleging the AI language model was developed by these companies and was trained on their copyrighted material. They're making this bigger, of course, because it is. It's trained on mm. lots of copyrighted material, okay? And so um, the lawsuit is seeking the class action status to aim to address this very controversial topic. This is something that, you know, we have been covering a lot on this channel as far as dealing with AI, musicians getting into it, you know, taking people's voices. And, you know, the thing of it is, you know, while you could go in there and go, write me a stand up routine of Sarah, like in the style of Sarah Silverman, make it, you know, give me like five jokes around the topic of buying a new car. I, I don't know, just just whatever it is. And while it's not there yet as to truly capturing something, it's on its way because AI is just developing at such a, a rapid rate that it is just insane how far it goes. So Sarah Silverman, the other authors, they're just alleging that they didn't consent to their works being used for purposes of chat, GBT, or anything else. Now, I think in the complaint, because they named Meta, right? Meta cool. is the owner of Facebook and Instagram and threads and WhatsApp. <laughs> okay. So, but Meta, uh, and, and so basically saying that they were using the author's copyrighted stuff and it was kind of on this platform, which then permitted access without credit without compensation so that's that's my general understanding of it and the thing of it is you know with meta and then i think i just saw that elon musk is starting another his own like ai company or he's really going real hard on something and and the thing about meta and twitter is they have your information like just from being on all these apps you know it's not just artists that you know these major artists that you have to that are just getting whatever all of our information has in meta and twitter and all of these companies with like you know that was a big controversy that we were seeing with threads is when people were jumping over there it's just there was all these new kind of permissions and stuff that they were taking and just the information it was a great way for them to kind of compile all the information and add it in new don't think that we're not being analyzed. You know what I mean? It's all being tools. There's probably that's probably the reason why Elon Musk bought Twitter is so he can acquire everybody's user information and stuff so he can incorporate it into his AI. So, so are you saying it's happening anyway? So everyone just needs to get on board? No, I, I think I don't even know why that I was going on that rant. More is more just as like you just see a lot of things, you know, you, you hear a lot of things about TikTok and harvesting information in China and all this stuff. And it's like, you're seeing it in real time with, you know, American companies. It's not, it's, it's, it's just the way that it is. And at this point, I mean, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, I mean, you're, you're already kind of, you're in there, you're, you're, you're in. So it's just a matter of what they do. And even when they're talking about, you know, the things that, you know, Sarah Silverman is looking for, you know, they, they want some kind of, you know, protection or if they're going to be analyzing some kind of compensation, but like, how is that going to work? Like, so you're just like, I, I don't know. This is going to tie in too when we start talking in our next story about, you know, the, the, the Hollywood strike, that's a writer strike and how AI is hardcore affecting it. But if Sarah Silverman can gain some traction and we can get, you know, people take this seriously and everybody kind of rallies around these people, not like, oh, the Hollywood elite, these, these actors and these people, the rich people, it's, we'll get into that more later, but it, it, it's, the law is it's, it's going to affect you. Everything is going to affect you. How much AI can get away with. So laws need to be set compensation or figuring out what they can regulate or not. But I'll also say finally on this for me right now is I know I'm going long window. I'm very passionate. This about is, this. this is, this is how our actual conversations this is, go. This is all, it's more like, it's more like a, what we both do this to each other. We yeah, go on, totally. on lawn winds, long like winds. word vomit, <laughs> but I will say, this. I will say this thing. Sarah Silverman is incredibly brave. Now listen to what I'm saying. 
Sarah Silverman is incredibly brave going up against these giants that control AI, that can, you know, make people say whatever they want them to say, where they are literally have control of their information to go. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, they're going to retaliate something AI kind of campaign or something, but you're going against not only people that are literally running social media, which you can argue is literally ruling the country and the world. Um, I think she's incredibly brave to be going up against them and being so vocal about it. And I would like to see a rally behind it. Yeah, well, my understanding is that this lawsuit had already been filed and she's now joining with the other um, authors. I think all of this is going to force open AI. And so the CEO, Sam Altman, is going to force them to actually acknowledge the issue because it's a problem, right? So we talked about this before, really chat GBT kind of started taking over the planet however many months ago. Before then, we were talking about these apps that you could do that were going viral and they're so fun where you right. could have portraits of yourself made right. by the app. And then the issue that came out was, well, isn't this copyright infringement? Because they were finding that the app seemed to be taking from real people's right. artwork. And, you know, they could even see stuff like signatures from the original artwork was kind of like still embedded in the new portrait created. And so, you know, one of the biggest issues is that, you know, for their two be a copyrightable piece of work it has to be created by a human so then the connection is well this if this is something created from someone else's work it's a little bit easier but here with with you know chat gpt and open ai if it's just studying your stuff to learn about it it's not really derivative works it's not really copyright infringement it's gray at best and at least that's what's being argued uh, yeah, it's what it is, is it's scary. And you know, the thing of it is when pretty soon they're going to figure it out. They, I mean, you hit it on the head. This has been a new thing that's been kind of opened up to the public and look how good it is already. I saw, um, you know, a picture of Michelle Thomas. And I don't know if anybody knows who she was on Family Matters. This picture, there was like a set of pictures that was created that was done in AI. I could not tell the difference. I thought they were real pictures of her. They looked so unbelievably incredible. And it's just, just how good that it is. And how many, how much that it's already being used, like in just the everyday stuff. And you're not even noticing that it's, that it's there. Um, right. Right. No, so, to your point, I mean, you know, as far as how much it's influencing our culture without us even really knowing, right? So, for example, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of YouTubers are now using it for their titles. A lot of songwriters are using it to help create and just have a weird. starting place for songs. And it's influencing and crafting. And so almost, you know, to the point where now we're kind of noticing where stuff looks like it was created by AI, uh, so it's, 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 but it's going to be harder to tell. Cause it's going to keep getting better. The more that we use it, the more that we give it prompts, the more that it has access to meta and Twitter and the way that all of our writing styles are, cause now it has access to like every single tweet that everybody has ever posted and what, who they are and what connection. And it's happening at lightning speeds because it's computers and these supercomputers. I don't know. I, it's, but they got they got they got to set some boundaries now. But at the end of the day, what kind of boundaries can they really set? You know what I mean? What? Like if these guys. I mean, they could put laws on it. They could they can they can do things. But I'm saying AI is here. The power of it is here. It's not going away. They could try well, to re regulate it, but you're going to see. I mean, we got elections coming up. You know, just yeah, let's careful. let's not let's not get into conspiracy. I just theories. have a whole so calm no, yourself. I just have a whole calm thing your... about AI lately. I'll tell you what. But Aaron, um, your your comment, he wonders if AI uh was asked to review the arts contracts, if they could find a way out of this, could AI counter suit? No, that's pretty interesting. And, and in fact, you know, there's there's stuff being developed and probably already in existence. It is already in existence, where you know, it can go in and read contracts and interpret yep. them for you and uh, it's pretty amazing. So we're going to be following this lawsuit because right now they're looking for class certification. We'll see if they get that and we'll keep you guys updated.